to get into more details, I want to invite up Lou Tucker. You know, one of the great things in working in this industry is you get to be to see the same people a lot, and it's been my great fortune to work with Lou for what 25 years, like way the, longer like than that. we, we want to talk about. We keep going back. Keep staying inside of Sun. Actually, we're getting the band back together again. <laughs> YouTube uh, video was very fitting introduction to this. <laughs> so cool. So Lou's our chief technology officer of our cloud group, and uh, what we want to do is, is start to give you a sense what what are the components of of the Sun Cloud platform. And, and give you some demos of some of the pieces. So, sure. uh, well, do you want to walk yeah, through the, the way the way to think about it, and with our open cloud platform, the, it consists of a couple major pillars, and that that consists of the compute service and the storage service. And this is where, as with other cloud platforms, you will be able to, as a developer, spin up instances of virtual machines, uh, be able to access your own storage volumes. We also support virtual networking components in that. All of that in the context of building your own applications. So the context for, for SunCloud then is also wrapped in this notion of a virtual data center. If you've got two guys in a dorm room or you're working out of Starbucks, uh, you don't want to have to think about where, where are you going to put your servers in some co-location facility? What VC are you going to go to and ask for a couple million dollars to buy equipment? Instead, what you'd really like to be able to do and what we're providing with SunCloud is that you get to create your own virtual data center in the cloud and then put the equipment into it that you need when you need it. So this whole virtual data center idea then is kind of lifting us up out of the just machine image view and letting me think about complete applications and also the people involved and who yeah. might play different because roles. And the people are important. As we said, it's a community. I mean, that you're building a large application and if you're going to be successful, there's going to be a lot of people involved. So you can do that inside of a virtual data center. Also, the other things that you do in a virtual data center is serve different purposes. So you may have your web service that you're out going to conquer the world with, but you also may want to put your email server in there or your, your source repository. So there's a lot of different parts of, of a, a, that goes into a data center that we've all virtualized and made it possible for you to do in the cloud. So just like when, I'm, when I think about what's in my data center today and think about moving it to the cloud, I can have all that stuff together and I don't have to just think of it as individual machines. Exactly right. We think files. everybody on the planet deserves to have their own virtual data center in the cloud. Cool. Why don't you show us a little great, bit about great. What, what, what this is going to So I'll be switching to my a laptop here. And when someone first now logs in, so what a developer gets when they have an account on SunCloud is their own virtual data center. And sorry for the resolution here. We'll try to uh, make it a little easier for people to see. It starts with a very simple connection to a public internet and a switch. With this now, you can start to see on the left, we have a variety of components that can be used in this data center. So we have a a squid server, for example, here, a web server. So let's take a web server and simply drag this onto this pallet. At this point, we can start to see, and I will connect now this web server to the public internet. Pick up a public IP address, save this, and I will also connect this to a switch. Now I have essentially a web server modeled in my data center free to, for me to be able to go and put my application on. So this thing, all this stuff that you're seeing right now is running in our data center in Las Vegas. Right? That's correct. That's correct. This is running live today. Oh, you can also see on the left, so I may want to now not only support uh, Linux, but I may want to bring in a Windows server and connect it up in the same way. Now I have two servers, a web server and I have a, a Windows server ready for me to use. Better secure that Windows server since you put it on the public. Yeah, I think that we will um, <laughs> not keep that up there for long. There's <laughs> other kinds of components here, and let's instead go to a real application. So one of the things that's important is scalability. So if you're actually a web startup and you are just beginning, you will start out small, but you want to design your application so that it can scale. When you're doing that, you're not talking about the single server anymore. You're talking about the system architecture of your application. So what we have here, all of you, I'm sure, are very familiar with Wikipedia, a site that's hit by, I don't know, how many hundreds of thousands of hits a day, uh, running on several thousand servers. Wikipedia has a kind of classic multi-tier architecture that we have modeled here 
so that this application, which serves now MediaWiki based upon the same technology, can scale to any number of users. What I wanted to show here is now that application. So in the front of this, connected to the internet, we have a load balancer, a squid uh, load balancer based on Apache, followed by a cl kind of classical way of being able to go to one of three different web servers. This is what the full architecture looks like. So it is multi-tier in the fact that we have web servers on the front connected to memcached servers, which provide a caching function so the most frequently used pages, served pages, can be served directly to the web tier without having to hit the database. At the back end here, we can see we have two MySQL web servers. So this is the system architecture behind uh, this media wiki. So I see that you got some buttons there. We can start and stop this whole thing. We can, I see you can copy it, which means I can, you can take a snapshot of it and give it to somebody else and let them deploy exactly it. Exactly right, because again, in a data center, if you're running a real application, you have your production environment. So the, picture this being your production environment. However, you need to have your staging environment, your QA test environment. So by simply hitting this copy button, we can make duplicates of this. And that's something you can only do in this kind of a virtual data center. Can you imagine going to your IT guys and saying, oh, by the way, please make a copy of my entire production system because I want to test out some changes. That's the nice thing of getting virtual here. We can, uh... It certainly is. <laughs> so let's, let's actually take a look at this and make sure that this is really working today. So on the load balancer, I'm going to open up the detail page. As you can see, this is now running. Also, it has an IP address. So let's take the IP address. This is always the big scary time in the This is the scary there. time. <laughs> and we hit this IP address, and lo and behold, this is MediaWiki. Now, is it really load balanced? Is it really scalable? Let's test that out. The way you traditionally do that, so we have in here the tab, which the web server itself is, is labeling here. So we can see this is now being served up by SunWiki3. If I hit shift reload, I'm reloading that page into the browser. Still hitting that, now we hit SunWiki 2. <laughs> now we hit SunWiki 1. Let's eventually get back to SunWiki 3. So we've gone through each web server now in sequence from the single load balancer showing now this is a scalable application. I can add more and more web front ends to this thing to scale this as going forward. Well, cool, so I think that shows at least you know conceptually how I can very simply bring components in, create a complete application, start to manage it holistically so I'm not, I'm not having to deal with each individual machine all the time, but also package it up and give it to somebody else and, and replicate and distribute architectures. Exactly right, exactly right.